Welcome to Weather Basics, the atmosphere. In this topic, we will look at what composes the atmosphere, the hydrologic cycle and energy balance, and also explore the various layers to the atmosphere. First up, let's examine the layers. Layers, you say? Yup, the atmosphere has five distinct layers, all differentiated based on their temperature profiles. The layer closest to the Earth is the troposphere. It can vary from 4 to 12 miles in depth and contains 75% of the mass of the atmosphere. This is where our weather occurs and planes fly near the top of this layer. Above the troposphere lies the stratosphere. It's roughly 20 miles deep and contains 24% of the atmospheric mass. This layer contains the ozone layer, which protects all life on Earth from the harmful and potentially lethal ultraviolet radiation emitted by the sun. Now, if you've been keeping track, you will notice that the troposphere and stratosphere account for 99% of the Earth's atmosphere in the lowest 30 miles, yet the atmosphere still extends upwards to 40,000 miles. The atmospheric molecules get farther and farther apart as you get higher in the atmosphere and therefore become much less dense. Next is the mesosphere. It's colder here and this is where meteors will burn up, what we commonly call falling stars. Above here is the thermosphere. This layer warms up as you move upwards. The aurora borealis is located in the thermosphere and the space shuttle flies here. Lastly, there is the exosphere. Molecules are very, very far apart here and gradually escape into space. The atmosphere is composed of several gases with nitrogen making up the bulk at 78%. Next is oxygen at 21%. After that comes argon at 1%, and then there are several trace gases, which account for much less than 1%. These include carbon dioxide, neon, helium, methane, krypton, and hydrogen. Now let's turn our attention to the energy balance. What is the energy balance? Well, it's the balance between the incoming shortwave radiation from the sun compared to the outgoing long-wave infrared radiation emitted or reflected by the Earth. Starting with 100% of the solar radiation, 16% is absorbed by the atmosphere itself, 3% absorbed by the clouds, and 51% by the Earth. 4% is reflected directly back into space, 20% reflected by clouds, and 6% then reflected back by the atmosphere. The Earth has to do something with that 51% absorbed, and it re-emits it as infrared radiation. Let's see how this stacks up. 21% is emitted back into the atmosphere, with 15% being reabsorbed and 6% making it back into space. 7% is returned to the atmosphere by sensible heat flux, which is the heat energy released by changes in temperature. Next, 38% is emitted back to space by the atmosphere itself. 23% is put back into the atmosphere by latent heat flux, which refers to the evaporation of water, which many times turns into clouds. Lastly, 26% is emitted back to space by clouds. So looking at the bottom, you will notice that the 51% of the incoming radiation absorbed by the Earth is equal to the amount re-emitted. Meanwhile, the reflected and outgoing radiation, when added together, equals the amount of incoming solar radiation keeping the Earth in an energy balance. In this way, the Earth maintains a stable average temperature and therefore a stable climate. If this went out of balance, the Earth would start to cool down or heat up. The hydrologic cycle describes a process through which water moves through the Earth's atmosphere and water system, basically how water is recycled. Let's start with how water gets into the atmosphere. Evaporation. Evaporation is the changing of water into water vapor, a gas. On average, 47 inches of water is evaporated from the ocean's surface into the atmosphere each year. Transpiration. This is the evaporation of liquid water from plant and trees. About 90% of all water that enters a plant's root system evaporates. Sublimation. This is the process where ice and snow change directly into a gas without changing the water first. Condensation. This is what happens when water vapor changes back into a liquid form, usually from the result of cooling. In the case of clouds, the water forms water drops. Transportation. The movement of solid, liquid, and gaseous water through the atmosphere. Without this movement, 
the water evaporated over the ocean would not precipitate over land. Precipitation. Most falls as rain but includes snow, sleet, drizzle, and hail. Over 300,000 cubic miles of water falls each year, mostly over the oceans. Snow melt and surface runoff. These two move water across the Earth's surface into lakes, rivers, and streams. Infiltration. This is the act of water soaking into the ground, into the groundwater supply. Groundwater flow. The flow of water underground into aquifers and other holding areas. This water may return to the surface in springs or eventually seep into the oceans. And lastly, plant uptake. Water taken from the groundwater and soil moisture. Then, the whole cycle repeats itself over and over again, a continual process of the renewal of the Earth's water supply. So we have looked at solar radiation, and when we take that energy, add moisture to it, we get, in essence, weather. Let's see what you remember. The bulk of the weather occurs in what layer of the atmosphere? The troposphere, the stratosphere, or the mesosphere? If you said troposphere, you are correct. The troposphere is the lowest layer in the atmosphere and is where most of the clouds and precipitation develop. What percentage of the atmosphere is composed of oxygen? 54%, 78%, 36%, or 21%? It's 21%. Over two-thirds of the atmosphere is composed of nitrogen. What process returns the most moisture back to the atmosphere? Is it sublimation, evaporation, or transpiration? Evaporation returns most of the moisture back to the atmosphere with 85% of that coming from the oceans. What did we learn? Well, there are five layers to the atmosphere with weather occurring in the bottom layer, the troposphere. The atmosphere is composed of many gases but dominated by nitrogen and oxygen. The Earth maintains an energy balance with the incoming solar radiation by absorbing, emitting, or reflecting back this energy. The Earth recycles its water through a process called the hydrologic cycle. When we mix the solar energy together with water, it gives us weather. For further information on any of the topics we have discussed, here's a listing of some good resources.